Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios, and welcome to Just Paint the Base, my new series on painting comic style bases. Today I'll be painting a desert theme base. I'm going to begin with a base coat of Steel Legion Drab. I've already primed this base with just some brush on Badger Steinal Res, and I'm going to be doing about three coats of the Steel Legion Drab just to make sure it's nice and consistent. So you can see I'm just finishing up the first coat here, and after two or three coats, it looks pretty solid. All right, that just about wraps up the base coat here. So what I'm gonna be doing next is using some Averland Sunset and just freehanding some really broad waves across the surface of the base. So I start by boxing in both sort of the, you know, inside and outside curve of the wave here. And then I just fill that in and then go over it a couple times to make sure it's as consistent as the base coat is in color. I'm going to add a second wave towards the outside edge of the base here. Now it's important to keep in mind I'm actually going to add a mid-tone between these and the base coat. So I want to make sure there's ample room between these two waves to allow for that extra little wave I'm going to add in just momentarily. So here I've mixed a 50-50 blend of Averland Sunset and Steel Legion Drab. And I'm being a little more careful now because I want to follow the exact curve of the existing wave and just kind of place this on one side of it. Now because of how I'm doing that, the other Averland Sunset wave doesn't really get much of a detail. It's just a tiny little fill. But I'm going to kind of imagine a third wave off the side of the base and create this you know, shadowed cast bit to it as well. Next up, I'm going to add a few random rocks to the base, and I'm just painting these flat on using Mechanicus Standard Gray. And either like to paint just sort of a larger single rock or, you know, a kind of a small collection of pebbles. So you'll see, I just kind of go around the base and paint, you know, more or less just circles with some smaller circles nearby. And that's really all there is to the base coat for these rocks. Now right here, there's not a lot of contrast between the Mechanicus Standard Gray and the Steel Legion Drab, so you almost can't even see the rocks as I'm putting them down. But once these are highlighted and outlined, it'll be much more apparent. For fun, I'm going to add a little cattle skull to the base as well. I'm going to be using Reaper Aged Bone to do this. I'm just freehanding in the rough shape of a skull with a couple horns on it. In hindsight, this skull is actually really tiny compared to the base, and I should have made it a fair bit bigger. Um, really didn't think about that at the time, and that's on me. I don't know, maybe this is the skull of an elusive jackalope or some other weirdly horned animal that shouldn't be. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of Steel Legion Drab and just paint the eye socket back into the skull. And I'm kind of trying to paint the skulls if I'm looking at it from like a two-thirds perspective. So if you're looking at it on the base, it seems to just kind of pop up a little bit. Now that I've put the skull down, I've kind of established a facing for the base, and I'm using that now to orient some highlights on these rocks. To give a bit of an illusion of, you know, depth and 3D-ness to these, I'm basically putting the highlight on the front side of each rock and then leaving a bit of a shadow on the back. Now because I want the rocks to look natural, even though they're cartoony, I'm making the highlights kind of irregularly shaped and then when I come in with the black lining later I'll be able to sort of create the appearance of some sort of facets to the rock so they don't look like they're just all smooth round pebbles. Now I'm coming in with some straight administratum gray and adding another series of highlights to those rocks. Now 
Now with this highlight, even though each rock is painted flat on the base, I'm kind of imagining that there's a bit of a top edge that I'm highlighting, which more or less is towards the middle of each rock. A little bit tapered towards the front, but you can see that you know I'm leaving some shadow on both sides of them. Now I'm just coming in with a little bit of some white and highlighting the skull a little bit further, and the horns as well. And next I'm going to take that same white and just add some little highlights to the rocks, really kind of trying to be a, you know, a final edge highlight here on some edges that don't really exist. All right, now this is where the magic happens. I'm gonna be using Higgins Black Magic Drawing Ink. It's a waterproof drawing ink and it works really well for this style. It just flows smoothly off the brush and it's very opaque, which means you're never doing more than one coat with it. Now, there are other inks that work really well. Dale or Rowney FW Black is fantastic. And in a pinch, Liquitex Black Ink Carbon Black will also work. I would recommend staying away from things like calligraphy ink, such as Speedball Super Black because they tend to not be watertight, which means if you end up, you know, trying to use a little bit of like a sepia wash or something on this later, you're going to basically have your inks run, and that's not fun. So right now I'm taking the black ink, and I'm just very carefully outlining all the details. So going around the skull and tracing the shape, you know, going around the horn here. I also recreated the eye a little bit, just made it a little bit deeper. And I'm just going to kind of repeat the same process with the rocks. I'm going to just go around and trace the outline of each rock. And the other thing I'm going to do is create a single little line, more or less, on each rock that kind of counters that really sharp white highlight I created to sort of create the back of that sort of imagined sharp edge. And what that does, it divides the rock into sort of a front face and a back face, and that makes them look even more like they stand off the base, even though they're completely flat. And I'm just about done here outlining the rocks and detailing them, which means it'll be time to work on to the actual sandy aspect of the base itself, all the little waves we made in the first place. So now I'm going to break the waves up by just painting a nice thick black line along the crease between the two different waves. And I'm basically just going to alternate this, so every second set of waves here, I'm going to just break up with a thick black line. Now, I've met two different lines in the middle here, and they didn't meet perfectly square, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thicken the line up now. And it's a little bit easier to trace once it's down. So you can see I'm just, you know, making the thickness of the line pretty consistent, bringing it to both edges of the base, all the way out to the edge. And now I'm going to paint my second line here. Again, so you can see I've just sort of skipped over you know, one seam and gone to the next one. And this just sort of creates the illusion of sort of some ripples in the base. You know, you've got sort of some interplays of shadow and highlight. And finally, one little one along that back little, little bit of a wave that just barely fit on the base. Now that's it for the major detailing. And honestly, you could leave the base at this and it looks pretty awesome. But you can go around, just add a little more character to the base by just painting in, you know, little scritches and scratches, little marks in the sand, 
and I like to do sort of little boxes and circles that kind of indicate that there's either dimples or maybe even, you know, clumps of sand or small rocks that are small enough that they weren't worth coloring or even just are the color of the sand themselves, right? I mean, sand is made of crushed rock, so there should somewhere be a rock that is the same color, you would suspect. So I just kind of go around, make little dots and bumps and imperfections, a couple little lines here and there, and it just creates a whole lot of texture in what is otherwise a pretty flat area, and it helps break up the just the solid colors of these waves. Now one thing I find is kind of important to making this look really good is just having a couple details that carry off the side of the base. So you can see the one rock really butts up against the side and I'm just making a couple little linear details that you know just carry off of the base and that sort of makes it look like the base is part of a whole and isn't just a standalone object. Now finally the last thing I want to do is just go around and black out the rim a little bit of the base coat color and the you know different sand colors used for the waves does end up spilling onto the rim and I just want to make sure the you know side of the base is nice and crisp and even though the base was primed in black I like to make sure I cover it all with the ink because the color of black you get from the primer isn't necessarily the exact same shade you're going to get from the black ink. So the last thing of course to do with the base is to mount a miniature to it. Now this miniature I've already got pins in both feet so that makes it really really simple. I can actually use the pin to just scratch the surface a little bit where I know I'm going to drill and drill where the you know pin left a little chip in the paint. Once that's done I can reattach the miniature using that one pin as a guide to figure out where the second pin should go and rock the miniature a little bit to again score the paint slightly and once I've scored it then I can go ahead and drill it again. And now I'm going to attach the miniature to the base by just pushing those pins through the two holes. Just a little bit of pressure from the top down onto the miniature to make sure it pushes all the way through and seats nicely. Then I'm going to flip the base over and super glue those pins to the bottom. I like to super glue the pins to the bottom of the base rather than gluing the feet of the model to the top. Because if I were to glue the feet to the top, I'm actually gluing the model onto the paint and not onto the plastic. Whereas in this case, I'm making a nice firm bond between you know, the metal of the pin, which is already secured to the model, and the plastic of the base. So the last thing I'm doing here is just painting a quick outline around the feet, and this just helps isolate the model from the base, and it really just carries forward the aesthetic that's established on both the base and the model, that heavy black lines isolate details from each other. And you just work your way around both feet, now with the metal pins, the models sometimes stand just a little bit off the base, and so you just want to take a look and make sure there's not a gap underneath the foot, and if there is, just fill it with black ink. And that's really all there is to it. We've got a model on the base, which is really what the base is all about. The model featured here is Wildwing from Freeblades by DGS Games. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new content in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do so at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps me keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, keeps a roof over my family's head and food on the table. Honestly, Patreon is what makes doing this every single day possible. You can also catch me six times a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios. I'd really love it if you came by to watch my show sometime and clicked follow. A big thank you to everyone who has supported my stuff, both past and present, over the years. It's been a wild ride, and I couldn't do this without the fans and all of the wonderful flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you make this worth doing. So let's keep doing this together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.